ethics in advertising. So what does situational ethics refer to? Well, let's have a bit of a recap about what ethics is exactly. So far, you might have looked at these three main areas that ethics can fall under. The first is looking at virtues. The second, duty ethics. And the third one there is utilitarianism. Situational ethics is doing the right thing, but this is about the right thing depending on the situation. So it's essentially a combination of the duty ethics, but also the utilitarianism, where what's telling us what is good is largely dependent on who it's going to benefit. And that can, of course, depend from situation to situation, which complicates the matter slightly. Another important definition is looking at situational ethics as a doctrine of flexibility, which is really a fancy way of saying that it can depend on different times, different contexts, different advertisements, and different people viewing the ad, because each of us have our own moral laws, moral ideas about what is right and what is wrong. How does this all fit into advertising? Well, advertising, as we can see here, is defined as the activity or profession of producing advertisements. And why are advertisements produced? Largely for commercial products or services. So it's all about money. And that money is gained from selling something. And advertising is a means of promoting the product in order to sell more of that thing. Therefore, when we're looking at an ad, we need to be aware of what are the advertiser's intentions? What are they really trying to do here? And how does it affect our understanding of ethics? That is, what is right and wrong? Let's have a look at some examples. The first one here we can see is an expensive handbag valuing around 1,000 Australian dollars. This in itself doesn't seem to be a moral issue. After all, it's per women are perfectly entitled to buy expensive handbags. But what if we look at another ad that looks at the same issue from an ethical standpoint? The situation now changes completely. We have here the suggestion of a lot cheaper handbag, only 32 euro. Um, but what we can see is that this particular uh, African villager would only spend four euro on food for a week. And we need to put things into perspective. If we're going out and buying $1,000 handbags, how do we then deal with the ethical issue of some people in our world? I think it's around a billion people living under the poverty line. How are these people supposed to cope when we're indulging in our commercial material ventures? Looking at what advertising is all about, you'll of course be aware of the ADA principle. And advertisers are well aware that getting our attention, our interest, our desire to purchase things, and ultimately making the decision to purchase, is what it's all about. So at the end of the day, they're really interested in making money. So where is the ethics in money? Well, interesting statistics suggest that most people don't actually trust advertising in the first place. So why is it that it has such an impact in our lives? A really interesting campaign that looks at situational ethics is the PETA, that is People for Ethical Treatment of Animals, campaign that was launched all the way back in 1991 to stop people buying fur products. Here's an image that certainly encapsulates their agenda, but how are they going about doing it? Well, basically, their whole catchphrase is that we'd rather go naked than wear fur. And we can see many instances of women in the street, in public places, getting naked to promote this cause. How ethical is this issue? Well, many celebrities have got behind it and certainly endorsed it. But what's the purpose? Does the advertisement now change itself from originally rebelling against the fur trade, which is, of course, highly immoral and unethical, but what degree do they go to in order to promote this idea? Does it venture into unethical territory? That really depends on the way that you view it, and it comes down to situational ethics. 
a more recent advertisement, one that I've noticed on the side of buses travelling around Sydney, is this movie poster for Vampire Academy, an upcoming film. The catchphrase, they suck at school. This could be interpreted in many different ways. If we look at the target audience, probably 13-year-old or prepubescent females, we need to wonder, what is the situational ethics involved in promoting this film, that they suck at school, and on what levels does this catchphrase work on, when we take into consideration the visual image of two largely powerful females in semi-clad school uniforms carrying a knife. Another example that doesn't perhaps involve the situation of compromising our understanding of ourselves and our own values, but looking at an ethical issue and questioning our own standpoint on it is this WWF World Wildlife Fund's ad for uh, the promotion of uh, sustainability in different animal populations. Questioning, would you, more, would you care more if I was a gorilla? And this is looking at sustainable fishing. So it's actually questioning our own standpoints in different situations through the medium of advertising to essentially promote something good. So situational ethics, in conclusion, really comes down to teaching us that ethical decisions should follow flexible guidelines rather than absolute rules and they need to be taken on a case-by-case -case basis. When we look at situations around our world, we can see many serious examples of where advertising has caused immense problems in society. One such example that isn't so sinister, but certainly questionable, is a recent YouTube clip that clocked up 50 million views within only a few days. And I myself watched the clip and found it quite interesting where it had um, 20 strangers kissing for the first time. A few days later, though, it was revealed that this campaign all came down to money, that, in fact, it was promoting a clothes range for uh, an upcoming, ca uh, upcoming catalogue, and all 20 of the strangers were, in fact, models. So, therefore, what does advertising really promote? Let's find out.